This video presented by Phoenix Rising. Our mission, to investigate the psionics aurora sport and determine its capabilities, features, compare it to Gen 2 and Gen 3 night vision, and determine if it's worthy of procurement. Hi, Phoenix Rising here. And tonight we're going to be doing a review of the Psionics Aurora Sport. Greatest, latest digital night vision from Psionics. Best thing since sliced bread. Good as Gen 2, maybe Gen 3. Let's find out. Uh, this device is a $400 digital night vision. It's uh, got a perfect price point for entry level buyers and somebody who wants or needs some kind of night vision capability without breaking the piggy bank because they're not going to use it all the time or you know whatever. Uh, that being said there's been a lot of hype on this thing being as good as a Gen 2 or Gen 3. Well what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do a walk around the unit up close going over all the controls kind of settings menus a uh, couple of pointers on battery and one setting in particular that you will want to change depending on the circumstances to get the best quality you can out of the device. And uh, then we're going to go outside and side by side this with an MX9644 based Gen 2 and a PVS14 based Gen 3. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And uh, the reality of it is, is for a $400 price point, this thing's a pretty capable device, okay? I bet you this is going to find its way under a lot of Christmas trees this year. And uh, to be honest, uh, I think there'll be a lot of happy customers because uh, really this thing does perform very well for the price point uh, compared to its original brother, the Aurora, okay? Now you are giving up a few things. The Aurora was $700, this is $400. Uh, you're giving up the GPS function, the compass, the recoil activated video and the uh, ability to be mounted on a rifle uh, or actually maybe not you can probably still mount this on a rifle but the other one's rated for recoil of some kind this is not so you give up all that but you still have all the functionality of the night vision portion so Cyanix Aurora Sport let's go ahead and do a close-up on it get out in the field compare it to Gen 2 Gen 3 and I'll let you be the judge if this is a good value, but I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Tabletop Investigation Okay, let's get up close and personal with the Psionix Aurora Sport. Uh, we'll go ahead and spin this thing around a little bit for you so you can get a good gander at it. Uh, then we will go ahead and talk about the buttons, the forum, the function, the doodads, the good, the bad, the ugly. And uh, then we'll cut it loose and go out and look at some video footage or do some video footage. Okay, so we'll start at the mode, side, uh, mode dial side. Typical mode dial. Uh, you have photo, video, uh, loop recording, playback, and your Wi-Fi settings. Uh, this is kind of a little bit spongy. It doesn't have as good of a detent as I would like, and I wish it was a little bigger, a little rough, rougher textured for gloved hands uh, when you're out there fumbling around at night. Okay, We'll go ahead and turn it on, and you got to listen to the cool psionics sound here. Ooh, impressive. Uh, turn it on, get your green power light over here. You can go in this menu down in the bottom settings and turn off the sound completely, shutter sounds and that little digital completely shutter sounds and that little digital buzz. Uh, Wi-Fi, you do have a Wi-Fi app. You can transfer files. You can look through this thing. Uh, I got I downloaded the app for Android and the app works. Uh, I'm not that impressed by it, which I'm not impressed by the streaming stuff that much anyway. But uh, the thing that got me is if you are set it to stream to your phone, you get a message in the back of your viewfinder, so you can't be looking through it, streaming it to your buddy's phone or any of that mess, okay? It's either going to the phone or going to the viewfinder. Uh, kind of a bummer. That would, If you're going to have that, that would be a nice functionality to it, which is not present. So that's your mode dial, okay? Uh, Talk about photo mode for a minute. 
Uh, photo mode does not give you any better resolution than your video, okay? This is going to give you a 1280 by 720 image, uh, which is basically one frame. image, uh, which is basically one frame of uh, 7... 720p video. Uh, so, is it to have a value? I guess so. You can change your shutter speed. You can shoot burst mode with it. You can do panorama, selfie, time lapse. But again, the resolution is so low, very limited added value there. Okay. Now, uh, there. Okay. Now, uh, Movie mode, 720p, uh, not much there. You do have electronic image stabilization you can turn on via the menu, uh, HDR, and uh, you can select frame rates, which go from 7.5 to 15 to 30 to 60, and it has a slow motion mode, which I guess records probably at 60 frames a second, and then plays it back at 30 or 15. Uh, again, you could do that post-processing. That's kind of just a glittery buzz buzz thing uh, So 720p video now uh, Your menu buttons up top here. We'll talk about the functions there, but know that you have With the press of the set button you go to a specific menu for each of these modes for photography for movies and that's where you can set a number of functions related to just whatever mode you're in. If you press and hold this, you're going to come up with a separate menu that's going to allow you to adjust screen brightness, uh, EVF timeout, a couple of other things. But the most important thing it's going to let you do is set your night glow mode. Why they called it that, I don't know. Is set your night glow mode. Why they called it that, I don't know. It's a dumb name, okay? But what night glow mode does is when you're in night mode, it changes the way you're going to perceive this thing, whether it's color mode, night color, grayscale, or green. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But uh, to get to that function, and you will need to, you will want to, press and hold the set button to bring up that separate menu. And it doesn't matter whether you're in photo mode or video mode or whatever. Press and hold it and you can get there. So let's talk about your buttons on the top. You've got your shutter release button, which is of course shutter or start, stop video. Uh, if you're taking pictures, yeah, you can do two and a half, five or 10 frames a second, uh, whatever. Again, I'm not impressed with the photo mode, so you can have at it however you like there. Uh, as far as your menu, menu button and your directional pad, the directional pad when you're not in a menu has two functions. Your right and left buttons will do your digital zoom in or out, and to me the digital zoom isn't very usable. Uh, you're set only 720p resolution in the first place, guys. So uh, at that kind of a resolution, pixelate it and zoom it in. Yeah, this uh, you got it if you want it, but really not much added value with the digital zoom on this particular device with its low resolution. The next thing is your up and down buttons well, do you do your uh, adjust your exposure on this? So your EV setting is up and down, goes between these two buttons, uh, and that that's a useful feature for brightening or uh, gaining up, gaining down a little bit. That you can tailor your image for a little better viewability there. Now, if you are recording video, your EV buttons won't function, nor will your menu buttons. Okay, just so you're aware. Uh, so that's all the functionality on these buttons here. I'm not going to show you the menus in the back. Uh, you can take a look at that. Just trust me that I kind of went over some of the settings. But that, again, that night glow mode is very important. Now, and here's why, okay. This camera is basically, for anybody who's played with photography, this camera functions in aperture priority mode, okay. Uh, if you don't know what that is, Basically, you're, you have three variables that are going to determine getting the right light to make an image, okay? Uh, you've got shutter speed, or how fast, how much light it's going to allow in for what time period to the sensor for each frame. <coughs> you have your ISO, or your, uh, that would be like your gain, how much you're going to amplify whatever signal does get to the sensor, right? 
uh, and that's again ISO there's no ISO settings in this but it does gain up and gain down using uh, what would be the equivalent of an ISO setting so the camera controls those two things the third variable is your lens opening or aperture the camera has no control over that that's entirely up to you based on where you set your scene selector dial or ring okay so let's talk about that let's first uh know that a, a, a larger number f number is actually a smaller lens opening and and is less light coming to the sensor so let's we're in day mode right now let's go around and look at the front of our sensor okay get it down here to where we can see and if you can read the front of this it says f 1.4 f 2.0 and uh then f 5.6 okay now we're in day mode and that's the smallest aperture because if it's bright out this sensor is really tweaked for high performance and light gathering so you don't want a lot of light coming into it in a day mode you need to restrict that because even if it's using one eight thousandths of a second it might be too bright okay so looking at this you can see the aperture in there that f 5.6 aperture small pinhole dot there let's go ahead and change that to twilight mode okay did you see the aperture just open up let me repeat that okay that's f 2.0 now we're letting more light in for twilight or just after dusk uh, because you need it okay uh, again you're controlling the aperture the camera's going to set the shutter speed and it's going to set the uh, and the, uh, the how much it's amplifying things okay now I'm going to go finally to night mode see that now we're as wide open as possible now do you also see that kind of a red flash what that red flash is is that's what separates night mode really aside from the aperture that's what really allows this thing to work well at night and what that is is if you'll notice these little squares on top of your modes you'll see them shaded shaded hey that one's uh I maybe mean, I guess you can't see that because I don't have the camera close there you go day mode it's shaded it's shaded it's not and really what that actually is telling you is we are moving what's called an infrared UV cut filter out from in front of the sensor and replacing it with just a blank clear piece of glass and that red flash you see when we go to night mode is a glimpse of that as it's being moved out of the way a reflection now uh, what does that really mean okay these sensors in here can see a broader spectrum of light than the human eye can okay they can see a little ways into the infrared range or, or I mean the uh, ultraviolet range which is you know when we see black lights and you know if you look at a black light uh, you ever been to Spencer's gifts or one of those places they've got the black lights going and if you look at them your eyeballs feel weird and it makes some things glow well what's making it glow is ultraviolet light that you can't see hitting pigments that are responsive to ultraviolet okay uh, so but it goes into a range this goes into a range a sensor can see into that range farther than our naked eye can okay and on the other end of the spectrum into your red zone you go beyond the human visual range into near infrared and this camera can see that okay uh, but we block it because we want it to show us pictures that look like what we perceive so when you go to night mode you can hear the click as that filter gets moved out of the way now this thing is seeing everything it can see the broadest spectrum of light it is capable of seeing and that's why all your colors go really wonky when you go to night mode as well because now we're seeing everything that it can see being translated into light we can see so the colors are going to be all wonky uh, and that's that now I'm going to throw one other little fun fact out here is your uh, when you're in this night mode and you've removed that filter uh, I don't know if any of you have watched like you know the ghost hunters and all this paranormal <laughs> stuff they got on TV now right and you know these people will be out there and they'll be you know hunkered down in the house with their special lights and they'll say bring the bring out the full spectrum camera uh, this magical device that's going to uh, gonna see the hobgoblins the spirits and the monsters and all that other good stuff well guess what when we switch this to night mode what we've just done is converted this little 
uh, 7, 720p video monocular into a full spectrum camera. So now, uh, if you didn't have a reason enough to be interested in buying this thing, and uh, you know, the real proof is gonna be when we take it out in the field and uh, look and see what it can do. You know, if you, if you wanna go and see if the raccoon's what's getting into your trash can, see Bambi out there across the field, or the feral hogs, or whatever else is going on, uh, hey, you know, you can also swing by the local graveyard and, you know, see if Uncle Ernie's still hanging around there, uh, go to the haunted mansion and make sure that uh, the spirits are uh, at rest out there. Uh, you can do your own paranormal activities. So, uh, there you have it. Uh, night mode, full spectrum, psionics sport. Okay, one last thing I want to go over. Uh, we've looked at the front, and in case you noticed, uh, see how this is smooth? Uh, this is a flat piece of glass, a protective layer, but I wish they would have put a raised edge up around here to stop you from getting fingerprints and smudges on it, and also protect it if you bang it a little bit from breaking that glass. Uh, so, Psionics, please put that in there. You got a little hoop thing here to put a wrist strap on. This says Psionics Aurora, and it doesn't say it, but it's a sport model. Damn it, it's made to be running marathons with and uh, climbing mountains. Give us a wrist strap, okay? It's $2 for Pete's sake. Uh, make the sport sporty. Okay, enough of that. Uh, let's go ahead, pull the back off, and take a look at the battery and the SD card, okay? Little release down here. Pull it just a little bit, and it'll release and then pull. Pull it just a little bit, and it'll release and then pull your viewfinder module out, okay? Now you can see this is the only catch that's holding that in. Not a lot of grip, not a big bite, and it's only on one side. And you have a rubber seal around here. So I'm... And it's only on one side. And you have a rubber seal around here, so I'm not kind of questioning how well this environmental seal is uh, based on the fact you only got the one little catch, okay? Now, two things of interest in here. Uh, this is where you're going to put your 30 up to 32 gigabyte SD card down in this little slot, and it's of course a normal little push it in and it releases. This thing has a heavy spring on it, okay? You know, you got to be careful you're doing this, you know, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. Uh, or shoot this card across the room. I launched this thing, boy, it was it flew pretty darn good. <laughs> uh, and it's kind of tough to get your little finger in there to do it. So anyway, SD card slot. Uh, we also have our battery in here, which is removable, and you can get spares, okay? Uh, you'll notice you've got a catch kind of up here in the corner, kind of hard to see. Pop that or push it down. Okay, there we go. See? Pop that or push it down. Okay, there we go. That time it popped out good. Sometimes you've got to kind of heel tap it a little bit here to, to be able to get your battery out. Now this isn't the, hey wait, that doesn't say psionics on it. What the hell's going on here? Holy smokes. Uh, this isn't the original battery. Here is your psionics rechargeable battery. SX50 is their part number that they've labeled this thing, okay? Now, uh, thanks to the internet and other people's research, this battery is an off-the-shelf digital camera battery, which happens to be a Fuji NP50 style battery. If I can get that focused, Fuji NP50, okay. Got the same cutout notch. There you go, same, same, same connections, connections on it. Uh, 3.6, 3.7 volt again, not enough of a difference. Uh, 1,025 milliamps, 1,400. Uh, and aftermarket battery manufacturers always hype higher numbers because they think 100 milliamps is going to make you, them buy, make you buy their battery versus the competition. Uh, all that being said, two spare batteries, micro USB to USB charger, $14 on Amazon. Okay, uh, I've used these Castar batteries for. Oh, I'm not. I'm not getting a plug. No shameless plugging for me. But I've used this same brand. Uh, for my Nikon 1 cameras, for my Panasonic cameras, and uh, they've given me good performance, held up very well, and the chargers have held up well too for a reasonable price. So uh, again, there's other, I'm not saying this is the best brand out there, but I'm saying I've used them for various devices, and they seem to be a fairly solid brand as far as aftermarket batteries. Now, 
A uh, word of warning, you use these and something happens, uh, you might have voided your warranty, but I've never had that issue with any of the uh, any of the devices that I've used aftermarket batteries in. I've only ever had a couple actually even go bad on me over the years. So uh, that's my take on it. Uh, your mileage may vary. So there you have it, Aurora Sport. Uh, let's go outside and play. Daytime video capabilities. Okay, here we are in the backyard during daylight with our Psyonix Aurora in all its glory shooting beautiful 720p high definition video footage at 30 frames per second. Uh, to accompany that, we have our trusty Panasonic GX85 shooting in 1080p video also at 30 frames a second. Uh, I just wanted to do this. We're not going to spend a lot of time playing with this thing uh, now. As you can see, both cameras are not having any difficulty recording video. Uh, I just wanted to show what kind of quality you could expect, as well as show you the digital zoom in the daylight. Okay, so there we are. We're zoomed in all the way with our digital zoom. And as you can see, uh, that's not very usable, uh, not very practical. Uh, and that's largely because we have a 720p image in the first place, so we don't have a lot of resolution to, to pixelate uh, with a digital zoom. So there we go, we're back to normal. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll pan around a little bit. Then we'll switch to twilight mode and, uh, and the night mode just, just to do a quick uh, look-see, uh, even though we have enough light to where we don't really need to do either. Okay. So uh, there you, there's day mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch to uh, twilight mode and basically twilight mode changes uh, what changes to, that I know take place on the psionics is you go from an f5.6 a relatively modest aperture on the lens to f2.0 which allows a lot more light to come in uh, now it may change how aggressively the sensor uh, gain goes up or I what we would call ISO on a digital camera but Psyonix really doesn't say that, and it does. To be honest, I didn't see anywhere in the documentation that tells you what the effective ISO range really is of the Psyonix. I know you don't have any control of it through the menus, so uh, that's uh, I, I just don't have any information to share with you on that. Now, so we're in twilight mode, and that would be more effective for right after sunset when it starts getting too dark for day mode. Go to twilight. Okay. Now, uh, when you go to night mode. It's going to open that aperture up to an f1.4, as wide as it can go, but it's going to do something else. And I'm going to toggle that real quick so you can see. Now, I, I imagine the microphones on both cameras picked that up. Could you hear that click, click, click? Now, what's happening there is as we're doing that, of course, as I said, we're opening up the aperture all the way on the psionics. The other thing we're doing is we're moving a special piece of glass out from in front of your sensor. Okay, The name of that piece of glass is an IR UV cut filter. What that does is, you know, when you're taking pictures with a camera or video, you want the colors to, that, that it's producing to look like what you see. You want an, what you would call an accurate perception. Uh, however, your sensors that are in cameras, they are capable of seeing f into the ultraviolet range beyond what we can see by a little, by a somewhat of a margin, and to a much larger margin, they're also capable of seeing into the near infrared spectrum. Uh, and that's all stuff we can't perceive that the sensor can. Of course, uh, right now this sensor's color renditions is pretty uh, crazy, right? Uh, that's not what you want in a video or picture, but to use these sensors for night vision, it's highly beneficial because now uh, you're going to get a much better image quality or much more light gathering capability, albeit uh, weird in the color rendition. Uh, so that's your, uh, that's your IR UV cut filter removed. The Aurora versus Gen 2 night vision.
Okay, here we are in the backyard. Time to do some real comparison between the Psyonix Aurora Sport and a Gen 2 night vision device. Now, I did check with it against check it against a Gen 1, and it's just way surpasses uh, most of your commercial cheaper Gen 1 stuff. So I'm not even going to try because it's so difficult to record Gen 1 in the first place. So here we are. Psionix Aurora and an MX9644 based Gen 2 night vision device. Now, I'm just going to pan around the yard here. The conditions we have tonight are, uh, it's, uh, there's no moon out right now, although it is a quarter moon, but it's already uh, gone down below the horizon. Good starlit night with uh, no real cloud cover. And, uh, and because I'm on the edge of town, there's a uh, parking lot several hundred yards away with area lights and that's where you're getting uh, most of your ambient lighting from that and you know street lights out front which really aren't impacting us back here but what is impacting us is uh, those parking lot lights even though they're several hundred yards away looking up into the trees uh, you can see they're throwing a lot of ambient light into the trees which kind of in a very diffuse way is getting down to ground level now from what I can see with the naked eye uh, I can see the tree trunks fairly well because of that lighting, and I can see the larger branches. But uh, beyond that, I don't see perceive a lot of detail like what this night vision is showing. So uh, that's a comparison uh, for the day that we have. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the psionics and, uh, and about the night vision and the differences in the images we're looking at here, okay? Uh, first off, of course, the standard night vision is green but monochrome, one color. Uh, whereas right now we have the Psionics in its color nighttime mode. So we're seeing an array of rainbow colors that don't look very realistic. And the reason for that is because when we go into full night vision mode on the Psionics, what, uh, what we're actually doing is we're opening up our lens opening all the way to get as much light in as possible. Then we're moving the IR UV cut filter out from in front of the sensor. And we're probably, there's probably another piece of blank glass with the same optical qualities that's going in place of it. So what that does is that allows this sensor on the psionics to basically look and see part ways into the UV spectrum and to an, a larger degree into the infrared spectrum. So uh, all these sensors and cameras, even your phone, whatever, they all can see colors beyond what the wavelengths that we can perceive with the naked eye but we limit them because we want our pictures and our images to see or to look like how we perceive the world uh, when you talk about like the ghost hunting cameras and all this other stuff and they've got their full spectrum cameras so they can see the the ghouls ghosts and hobgoblins and all that other stuff uh, basically that's what the psionics is doing it's a full spectrum camera meaning it can see everything that it's capable of and is not limited to just the human visual spectrum. That's why your color perceptions on the psionics when you're in night vision mode look so strange. So uh, that's where it's coming from. Now the limitations of it compared to standard night vision are that it's 720p video, okay? So at 720p, uh, basically we have 1280 resolution of the screen or our view across and uh, 1280 across and 720 tall. Uh, that's fairly limited for resolution and when you're looking at the image of the night vision, the Gen 2 night vision, uh, you can tell that it has more detail, finer grain to it, so the psionics doesn't have the resolution. Now, because it's dark enough out here in the shadows, you can see on our regular night vision, you can see that kind of sparkling, shimmering look, and that's the night vision it's starting to have to work pretty hard to give you a good image. That's where that shimmering's coming from. On a psionics, it's having to do the same, but, but in color night vision mode, you're seeing that as digital noise like you would on a low light photograph. Uh, and that's digital noise coming off the sensor compared to the monochrome noise on the regular image sensor. So they both have noise, but the psionics has a lot more noise. It also has a lot lower resolution, but where it does excel, is looking at these images to me the gain is very similar between these two okay this is an mx9644 based uh gen 2 night vision same thing as the military uh pvs4 scopes used to be and uh it's a solid gen 2 device 
And on this one, it's my actually my Gen 2 scope. And what I did was I uh, I took the long, longer lens that I had on it off and put a 50 millimeter f 1.8 which again, that's that that f 1.8 lens is closer to what a lot of night vision would have uh, for handheld stuff. So we're actually getting a better, a brighter picture than I would normally have on this device I built. So there's the differences there. Now let's go ahead, and I'm going to turn on an infrared illuminator, and you're going to be blown away by this. And wow, what a difference, huh? <laughs> It's like unbelievably bright. Now this is an 850 nanometer illuminator, and it's not a high-end one. It's actually a relatively cheap one. I'm going to see if I got it on. Okay, yeah, that's actually on low. It has three levels of brightness, and that's on low. So uh, now let me go ahead and dial down to. That's so blinding to the regular night vision. I'm going to dial down the F number on that to get contrast back. So, and again, there you have it. Uh, this is Ionics as good as a Gen 2? Uh, no, but it's does give good amplification and uh, and it's a pretty impressive device. Now considering, okay, if I were to go on Fleabay and try and find a decent MX9644 image tube, pretty much they're going to run about, they're running around $500 right now just for an image tube that you're hoping is a good one, okay, used. Psionics Sport four hundred dollars brand spanking new out of the box okay uh complete you don't have to do nothing but charge it and play with it and put a memory card in it uh that's a hell of a lot of bang for the buck okay i'm not gonna lie that is that's that's pretty damned impressive so uh sonic sport is it definitely has uh for the for the money i uh, has my approval rating <laughs> no doubt there up oh, let me gain back up or not gain back up but open my f-stop back up on the gen 2 uh, so yeah, I mean, damn, uh, you, I'm thinking it's pretty hard to you, you, to go wrong if you were to get the uh, Sport. Now, I don't know if I'd pay $800 for the regular Aurora to be able to put it on a, uh, on a firearm uh, in front of or behind a red dot sight or something like that. Uh, yeah, GPS, I don't care. Uh, compass, I don't care. Recall activated video, I really don't care. Uh, but... Uh, again, I'm willing to um, for $400 or 300 uh, 299 with Black Friday sales. The sport's not a bad deal. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple things on this sport. That uh, it has a couple different screen modes. If I can find the right buttons on this thing. Uh, okay, is that right? Oh, let me. Uh, I'm going to have to turn on my headlamp here for a second. There we go. Okay, what the heck? Uh, I'm not getting my menu. That's weird. Maybe I'm not pressing it in good enough. Oh, you know why? That's because I'm recording. Sorry, I forgot. Okay, I had to have to shut off the recording. You can't get into the menu on the Psionics when you're recording. Uh, so there's one little learning curve thing. Okay, here we go. Now, to get into menus, you have specific menus for each function on the Psionics, okay? And uh, and a quick press of your center button where your uh, directional buttons are on the very top will get you there. If you press and hold it, then you have a global menu regardless of what uh, function you're in. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, now, I'm going to go into the night glow. I don't know why they call it that. That's kind of a weird name. And you'll see that we're in, currently in the nighttime color mode. Now, I'm going to take it to green mode first and show you this. I don't like the green mode. I think it's uh, kind of dumb. Uh, makes it look like traditional night vision. But as you can see, it really washes out your image. You lose contrast uh, and detail. It basically just makes everything green. And, I've, you know, there was kind of a similar issue. I, I got to play with the Sightmark Wraith digital night, day night digital night vision scope, and it had a green screen too. Uh, similar to this, only much worse, believe it or not. Uh, so there you go. If you're interested in the green screen on this Psionics, uh, I'm going to tell you that that's not all it's cracked up to be, as you can see here. Okay, if I started recording by accident. I'm, okay, there we go. I've got to find the right buttons here. Okay. Back to the psionics again, and let's go back to our night glow. And I'm going to change it to grayscale. And to me, grayscale is actually pretty usable. 
Uh, looking at it, it kind of looks like what a white phosphor screen would look like in traditional night vision. But uh, you lose color detail, but your noise is less obtrusive and less uh, distracting. And now looking at it, that actually looks to me a little better as far as from a night vision perspective. Now, I'm kind of torn between your uh, between your night vision color and, and this monochrome. And the reason I'll say that is, although the monochrome, the noise is much less distracting, the one thing about the monochrome is you lose a little bit of information as you're looking at the image. We don't have the resolution of a standard night vision, uh, but we do have good gain. Now, in this mode, it looks good, but the, the only thing I think that might make the uh, color mode have the edge is that when we're in the color mode, if I'm looking at something where the brightness uh, of different objects is about the same, but they're different colors, that color mode might let me discern differences and pick out details that I can't do in the monochrome mode, okay? So uh, six of one half dozen the other, probably situational as far as which one actually works better. So that's it, there you go, Psionix Aurora, and uh, is it as good as Gen 2? Maybe some Gen 2, uh, better Gen 2, definitely not. But hey, for $400, even being that close is a win-win, okay? Let's go out front and play around in a little bit brighter light between these two, and then we'll, uh, uh, then we'll go and we'll take a quick look comparing it to Gen 3. Okay, we're back and we're now in my uh, driveway on the front of the house. And what we're looking at is we're looking down the driveway and, uh, and across the street. And of course I have the Psionic still in monochrome mode. So it's a pretty good looking, pretty sharp looking image. Now we're, of course we've got some street lights here. And let me pan around and just see what we can see here. So there's a street light that's about 60 yards away. And that house, and let me see if I can focus on it a little better. With both devices now. And again, I got so much light coming into the darn my Gen 2. Actually, let me dial a. Uh, actually, I'm going to turn a gain down if I can find my gain knob on the back of this. Okay, there we go. Now it's manual gain, and I just cranked it down because I was actually getting a whiteout condition on the front, or on, the, on this thing. Okay, so uh, that's looking about as far as I can get away from looking in the driveway. And uh, the house that you're seeing in the distance is about 140 yards away. Uh, so as you can see, uh, good detail on both of them. The psionics image has cleaned up an awful lot with this additional light. And it's actually gotten so bright on our Gen 2 that we had to turn the gain down to stop from kind of getting whited out. Okay, now we're looking uh, at the driveway. And let me go back, and I'm going to crank up the gain a little bit. And so there we go. To me right now, they're looking about equal. But I've got actually got a little bit of extra gain on the night vision and of course I've got better uh, detail levels. So let's go ahead and pan around a little bit more. And, and uh, you can see where the haze is. We're almost seeing uh, where those uh, floodlights are in the parking lot a few hundred yards away. So, Okay, so there we go. There's a Gen 2 comparison two psionics in the front. I'm, I think I may even go down the road here just because. Okay, we're down at the street and as you can see it's a wide angle view and there's so much light that it's really limiting everything and I'm not even sure if I'm going to add this in. But let's go ahead and pan around a little bit. And again I have to gain down on my uh, Gen 2 because it has so much darn brightness that it's uh, limited. So I'll go ahead and keep the gain down and pan back around. And looking at this, let me see if I can focus uh, focus uh, on the uh, 
it looks like I'm about as far away focused on the psionics as I can get and okay so there you go that's everything focused now the psionics one thing I have noticed is the focused uh, it gets to infinity focus pretty quick and then you really don't have to mess with it where on regular night vision you tend to have have to tweak the focus a little bit farther out than you do on the uh, on the psionics so that's just a observation so okay there you have it uh, gen 2 compared to psionics and now uh, you know what let me do one more thing is I'm gonna uh, take this psionics and I want to go back to its color mode because we're actually in a brighter area whoops I gotta hold the button in to get to that menu so let's uh, go back to our night glow night color and here we go in our night color mode and you can tell you see different again differences in foliage color uh, and uh, differences because of whatever light sources happen to be around <coughs> and that is an advantage uh, again because that makes up in some regards when you have enough light it actually kind of makes up for not having the resolution because you have color information that will help you figure out what you're looking at in addition to uh, uh, amplified light so okay there you go that's it gen 2 versus the psionics the aurora versus gen 3 night vision okay here's our second round of uh, testing and we're again we have the psionics aurora sport and now we have a gen 3 pvs 14 uh, again, you know, when we were using it against the Gen 2 device, the psionics was coming close in some regards, but not really up to Gen 2 levels. Uh, but I did want to just show you compared to a Gen 3 PVS-14 where the psionic really is, and it kind of pales in comparison. But uh, you're looking at a, this, this, this Gen 3 device that we're looking at right now. Uh, this was a PVS-14 kit, all the lens parts and other stuff and a blemished new old stock tube so total price to put something like that together is you know twelve to fifteen hundred dollars okay uh, look at that and here we're talking literally a, a third to a quarter of that with the psionic sport uh, with no having to diy or anything else okay uh, that's a, that's that's a lot of bang for the buck. It was a lot of bang for the buck looking at it compared to a Gen 2 and even comparing it to the Gen 3, a lot of bang for the buck. Now, uh, because we're in such a low light condition, you can see we have a lot of color noise on the psionic. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch to grayscale mode. And uh, the green mode, that's, again, that's, if I can find the right buttons here, let me get in here. The green mode is, to me, not very usable under any circumstances. It adds green, but it lo you lose so much, uh, you lose so much contrast that it really is, is a waste of trying to play with it. But grayscale, on the other hand, as you can see, grayscale. Now that cleans up your image a good bit when you're really, really pushing this thing hard. Okay, uh, you still have the noise, but it's now monochrome. It's not all this myriad of colors. Uh, that although that can add detail and be helpful if it's too much noise I think it detracts so depending on the circumstances you may or may not want to run grayscale versus uh, nighttime color mode so so now we're looking at this thing and uh, panning around in grayscale and there's one other thing I want to show you and that is uh, both of these with two different illuminators uh, we'll turn on our good old trusty 850 illuminator first and again when you look at it uh, Wow, <laughs> that's good. That's that's a really good crisp image on everything's part, uh, and that's on low, I believe. So let's see. I mean, really, all of them are, are they're gaining down. It's putting out so much light, right? So 850 illuminator, and I also brought out here a 940 illuminator, and that's low, medium, high, and back to low. And 940 illuminators work with Gen 3 and work with digital as well. So uh, 
again that 940 illuminator with this works very very well and with the added benefit of 940 is, is about 60 to 80 percent less visible to the naked eye uh, at a distance than what the 850 is so if you're out there trying to observe wildlife and whatnot you're much less likely to spook them or scare them off with the uh, with a 940 than an 850 and it works and it works fine with uh, with the Aurora Sport so there you go Aurora Sport with the PVS 14 let's go ahead and just turn off the illuminators and look up in the trees here and uh, do one last pan around and I think I think that wraps it up uh, I hope this has been helpful uh, again uh, when I looked at all the hype I was kind of skeptical of the Aurora Sport and I still think when they say Gen 2 equivalent uh, not really but bang for the buck $400 for the capability you're going to get 300 if you can find it on sale boy that's a hell of a deal a hell of a deal in night vision so there you have it Psionics Aurora Sport. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Psionics Aurora Sport. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. That's the fuel that keeps this channel going. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free to download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. Commercial use of this video is expressly forbidden without my written consent, and hey, thanks for watching. Phoenix Rising here, and tonight we're going to be doing a review of the Aurora Sport by Psionics. Latest, greatest digital wonder night vision. Hi, Phoenix Rising here. And tonight we're going to be doing a review of the Psionics Aurora Sport.